I think what we'd like to do is, I've now explained to you about the huge uh, Hia Alumadine project. Right now, we're working really hard. I am on the version for five-year-olds because of my five-year-old granddaughter, Leila. And uh, Hamza Yusuf has just been here for the Festival of Faiths. And he and Yahya Rodas are now working on it so that we can try to get to everyone as soon as possible. Book one and book two, uh, the Book of Knowledge and uh, Akida for adults. And this will be, as I mentioned, patterned completely on the wonderful new 10-volume work that's come out from Darul Manhaj, which is the ultimate critical edition of Ghazali in Arabic. And so we will be using that to bring out a superb, readable English edition for adults. And beside that, the, the coming right in that family package will be the one for 10 to 12, 13-year-olds, and then the 5-year-old with beautiful illustrations and a workbook as well. So that's the first thing we'll bring out, and then we'll continue on from there. Uh, I think the last time we spoke about welcoming you to Fons Vitae, we just brought out uh, Marvels of the Heart, and uh, this took um, a long time to do, but uh, Tim Winter did a, a wonderful introduction, and that's a bit of more of Ghazali. And then, just catching up with you, um, from 2010 through 2011, some of the other works we brought out in the field of Sufism has been this wonderful work by Sheikh Abdul Wahid Palafecini, and this is a a work called A Sufi Master's Message. And what's so beautiful about this, if you look inside, you get some extraordinary pictures of the Italian Islamic community in Rome. And um, we were very honored to have the chance to do this wonderful book. Also, uh, Zachariah Wright has done this extraordinary uh, translation, The Removal of Confusion. Uh, Hamza Yusuf thought this was an extraordinary work. and. Um, this has to do with uh, Sheikh Ahmed Tijani. Of course, our Al Haddad series continues. The Councils of Religion is now out, and we have two others in the works. We have so many books in the works, it's gotten to be quite hard. In the field of our interfaith relations, uh, we did, since we've spoken to you, um, a work with Prince Ghazi of Jordan, The Common Ground Between Islam and Buddhism. There will be a film soon out on our website showing the entire uh, launch with uh, the Dalai Lama, uh, which was a wonderful affair and um, very profound. And this book is extraordinary, and I hope you will enjoy it. Also, last year we brought out uh, Reclaiming Beauty for the Good of the World, Muslim and Christi Christian Creativity as a Moral, f moral Power. And this is quite an extraordinary book that we've done um, with uh, the Dardess family, which took the idea of beauty and then showed it from the Christian and Muslim standpoint, which is a very unusual and refreshing way to deal with things. This little building right here on the cover, this is the little domed building. It's inside a mosque courtyard in Jerusalem on top of the Mount of Olives. And this is the place uh, traditionally agreed upon by Christians and Muslims where Jesus uh, rose. Uh, the Christians come here on the night of the vigil and put up tents in this courtyard. But there's the footprint and by the mihrab. And, but taking this work, and it, it was put up from a, for the Gromeyer Award here in Kentucky, it's really refreshing to read whether you're Christian or Muslim. You find out things about beauty you'd actually never thought about. In jurisprudence, we all have brought out uh, this year Shawali Allah's tr uh, Treatise on Islamic Law. And I know you've been waiting for Sheikh Ali Goma's book, uh, Responding from the Tradition, 100 Contemporary Fatwas. Even as we speak, uh, the final, final typos are being corrected, and it will go to press, we hope, any day. In, a, in the next few days, we expect. Um, then you ought to know about um, our, our wonderful Merton tradition, we brought out Hidden in the Same Mystery. This is about Merton's relationship with the nuns of Loretto, and in particular, uh, an extraordinary woman and a great nun. And these uh, are um, transcriptions of some of the talks they gave, wonderful pictures, and it's an actual gem of a book. Another gem, which has just come out, is uh, Rowan Williams, the Archbishop of Canterbury, 
an old friend of mine from school days when he was a dean at Clare at Cambridge. Uh, it's called A Silent Action Engagement with Thomas Merton. And these are, oh, it's a small, beautiful hardback with five or six essays on Merton, including one of Rowan's poems that he wrote about Merton. And um, it's, it's, it's a jewel and doing very well also. As you know, we also work in the field of symbolism and art. Uh, last year we brought out, um, it's called The Thread Spirit, The Symbolism of Knotting and the Fiber Arts. And this is a great book with many important, beautiful illustrations talking about some of the deeper meaning we find in cloths and weaving and textiles of all sorts. And then um, another book called Waiting and Being. Now, this is a book Hamsa adores. It's a sketches of a, of a portrait artist here of, of places where people are waiting, waiting in cancer wards, waiting to know what will happen, waiting at the train station, waiting to finish their book uh, in, uh, in sort of homes for the sort of homeless, waiting to see what will become of them. And amidst these wonderful drawings are essays by different people which break up the drawings and really make you aware that you do have a choice in your life between simply waiting or being. There's a great story about a man, two men in the desert standing by a palm tree. One was waiting and one was being. But this has some profound implications. It's interesting, Hamza Yusuf told me that the word for waiting in Arabic, intadhar, has to do not it has to do with having time in space and time to look within. We did tell you about uh, our, our wonderful work about the uh, water and its spiritual significance in all the different traditions. This is writings from all the faith traditions on the really deep meaning of water symbolism with a wonderful opening essay explaining what symbolism is anyway and how it works. Coming up um, very shortly, um, this will be in 2012, is a wonderful, um, it's like an encyclopedia of the medieval mind and with all the terminology and charts. And this has right now been with the uh, head of the medieval department at Yale. And this is something that will be of interest to everyone uh, who, who reads anything that in, includes the medieval mind. Um, we also, in terms of foundational texts, I mean, these are texts that libraries will want to have. We have uh, right now about to go to press. It's called The Book of Ascension to the Essential Truths of Sufism. And this is a unique lexicon of Sufi terminology written by one of the great uh, uh, saints of Morocco, uh, Ibn Ajiba. Also, and this has come out this year, another foundational text, the Tafsir of Atustri. As you know, we have a, a great uh, Tafsir series. We're doing this particular one with Prince Ghazi of the Ahl al-Bayt Foundation in Jordan. Uh, this is a wonderful work and took a long time and care in terms of its uh, typesetting and perfection. That's why it was late in getting to you. But not only is this out, and there would be many more in this really august series, but we also have coming out, it goes to press also in the next week or two, and I know it's been delayed, but we wanted it perfect. We will now have this extraordinary work called Spiritual Gems. And as you know, that will probably be one of the earliest, one of the earliest tafsirs that, that, that we know of. In the world of Sufism, right now, it's in the press and finished, a, a wonderful work called, listen, uh, The Spiritual Couplets of Mevlami, Mevlana Rumi. And this is being done with some wonderful Turkish people. And uh, this will be a great work in the field of Rumi. We have a book right now which has come out and it's just about to be delivered. It's called Revealed Grace, the Juristic Sufism of Ahmed Sirhindi by Art Bueller. Sirhindi lived, of course, in India in the 1500s. Uh, then we have something which will everyone will be pleased, Emanation of Grace, uh, mystical poems by Aisha al Ba'uniya, uh, who died in the early 1500s. She, this will go in. 
she was considered to be uh, one of the greatest women scholars of Islam with more works than you can imagine and she uh, was also a mystic poet and in her own right uh, um, a saint and guide and this will go into our category of women's spirituality. Uh, also, we now have a method in mysticism, cosmos, nature, and environment in Islamic mysticism um, for our religion and ecology uh, category. And then in the prophetic tradition, um, I know it's been, they've both been delayed, but they are now happening. The uh, portrait of the prophet is seen by his contemporaries, and that's the uh, Shema al-Tirmizi, which was done by Mukhtar Holland just before he died. But since then, it was decided that it, were it to be a critical edition, it would be of much greater value. And so Sheikh uh, Ninawi has been working on this, and we are in the last phases of finishing this. I think probably in December or January, it, sh it should finally go to press. And then the really great spiritual teachings of the Prophet Muhammad with commentaries by the saints and sages of Islam. I sent, we sent the manuscript to Hamza Yusuf when he was um, abroad, I think in Arabia, last summer. He was not well. And he said, it, upon finishing it, he was restored. He said it was the first book in English he hadn't been able to put down. You can't put it down. It's a collection of 300 or more ahadith um, that are, have to do with the inner transformation of the heart back into its pure divine nature. And um, this work has then, after the Hadith, which is in Arabic, and then it's English translation, you have the commentaries of people like Junaid, Al-Ghazali, and the like. Can you imagine reading, you know, the commentaries by saints, not just anyone, on those great Hadith? So that's an extraordinary work, which we've taken great care with because of its importance. Those are the things we're working on right this minute. And so um, there are many other things in the wing, but I think that's, I've said enough today about what has actually come out recently, and I didn't mention everything, and then also um, uh, the things which are just about to come out or have just come out. Um, we've been involved just recently with our annual Festival of Faiths here in Louisville. This has been the 15th one. We were very glad, oh, my grandchild is waking up. Let me introduce you to my little baby, Bilal. This is little Bilal, little Bilal. How are you? You see Paul, he's got a camera. Did you wake up? All right, thank you very much.